John, I suspect that by now you're pretty well used to being called mayor because you've been a mayor for how long now? I think it's uh, about uh, nine years. Nine years. I remember the first time you ran for political office, you were running for council person Ward 1. Correct. And um, a very good person uh, you were at that time, and you still are a good person. Nothing has really changed you. So we'd like to know who you are. John, first and foremost, are you sensitive about your age? No. When were you born? 37. February. What day? February 26th. So you are 60 years old yes, now. Yes, I'll be 61 next February. 61 years old next February. Where were you born? Here in Wadsworth, of course, but where? Uh, it was in the corner of Lyman and Pine Street. Lyman and Pine. That was down in the South End with so many of the wonderful people. You can't believe the numbers of people who from the South End have really been, not that you can't believe it, that's the wrong thing to say, but so many of the people from the South End have become prominent citizens of Wadsworth and have done uh, miraculously well uh, because... Um, we typically thought of the South End as being the uh, lower socioeconomic group. Well, that probably is what made us made you great. Brothers, sisters, who are they? I have a sister, Joan, a brother, David. Uh, Joan lives in Medina, and uh, David is, uh, lives in uh, uh, outside of Hagerstown uh, in Maryland, and he works for Xerox. And you're the oldest, right? Yes. You're the oldest one. Parents, mom, and dad, who are they? Uh, Gail and Art, and uh, of course, uh, that's my uh, father graduated from Wadsworth High School, and I, and I get it mixed up here. I think it was either Joe or Jeff uh, when they graduated. The 50th class, they always published right. that. Well, that was my father's class. Graduated 50 years before your, your own son did. Yes. When you were growing up, what was Wadsworth to you? I mean, what was your little cosmos? What was your little community? Well, everybody I knew either worked at Match or the Injector. That's right. Now, did your father work yes. at the Match or the Injector? Injector. And what did he do with the Injector? He worked in uh, in the forged steel part of it. In, uh, Foundry, up. perhaps? Well, it's forge is, uh, a, you take a piece of hot metal and you put it between a hammer and forge it into Oh, I a, see a uh, casting or, or was a valve of some type at that point. And he did that. Was he born in Wadsworth? Uh, i got to think a minute. Boy, that's a good question, Caesar. Uh, I think he was. Either Wadsworth or uh, between Wadsworth and Medina. They had a farm that they rented on uh, River Sticks Road. And they were lived there prior to coming to Wadsworth. To the city of Wadsworth, right inside the city. Your mother, who was she? Uh, Gail uh, Long, and of course there was a lot of Longs, and uh, Ned, her brother, was had grocery stores in town for years. And uh, Who were some of the other relatives of that Long? See, there are several Long families in Wadsworth, they're not all related. It's no, fairly that was name. the only one. Ned, Ned Long was her brother. Where was his grocery store? He had a grocery store in the south end, down there, almost across from the light, uh, been on the, the east what? side of the road. East side of the road. He had a grocery store at uh, in later in life over here on West Street where they... Uh, no, not East, West Street. E uh, East, East Street, yeah. I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> We'd had to correct that. Yeah. Uh, on East Street where they used to have... Uh, where now there's a, a appliance repair shop. That's right. And it was Delmer's Grocery. Delmer's for, Grocery. For years. Right. Why did they call it Delmer's? Well, the guy that run it was uh, had... had uh, Polio. Is that what it was? Polio? I think so. Delmer Motes. Yeah. And he uh, he run that, and I spent half my life trying to get a nickel or two to go up to buy a candy bar or, or a popsicle. And uh, it wasn't that Delmer's father was a jewelry store in town for years, uh, and just everybody would be at Delmer's, you know. Delmer's, right. Nicest guy in the world. Oh, super. Delmer's gone now, isn't he? Yes. Um, I don't know that it was polio. It was a crippling disease. Yes. I'm just saying polio. Maybe it was something else. But he was but a good, good person, just a wonderful person. Uh, South End in 1937 was um, hit hard by a depression. Do you remember your early days in terms of the depression? You know, it, it's kind of funny. I was thinking about this the other day. You know, my mother used to think that we ought to have meat once or two days a week or, or we weren't being fed or nu nutrition uh, that should have. Well, then to come to find out that now they're telling you, you don't have any meat. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, we we ate better during the depression than we're eating now because we didn't have those things. I can remember. 
eat out of the garden. Eat out of the garden all summer long, and that's all you had because uh, there wasn't anything available. You might get a chicken every now and then. People can't understand that, I suspect, today. And they probably won't understand it nearly so well when we celebrate our 200th anniversary. That's why we're doing these shows, incidentally, or these programs, so that whoever writes the history in the year 2000 will be, or the 2014, when we're our 200th anniversary, will have first-person reports. And you're coming for two or three reasons. Uh, one of them is not the fact that you're 65 years old, because this I'm, segment of I'm, Wadsworth I'm History... I'm already 60 That's now. That's right. <laughs> this segment of Wadsworth History on film is for 65 to 80. We had the 80 to 100 earlier, but now the 65 to 80. But you're here because you're the mayor. And since you're the mayor, we're going to let you tell us a little bit about yourself as well. What did, um, what did you think that you were going to do when you were growing up in, on uh, Pine and Lyman Street, South Lyman Street, and you would walk to school? Uh, what did you think that you were going to do for a living? Work at the injector of the match. Everyone else yeah. did the same uh, thing. You never thought that you were going to do yeah. what you were doing because um, that's what people in Wadsworth did. That's right. You went to Wadsworth High School and you graduated in 1950, what, six, five, five, five 1955. Tell us a little bit about Wadsworth High School and who some of the teachers were in Wadsworth High School in 1955, and some of the students uh, and some stories, and I think that uh, I'll remind you of a couple stories because I remember a couple stories about you in high school, uh, even though you're much, much younger than I. <laughs> we had uh, uh, one of the most interesting things that come back to haunt me later uh, in life was uh, Ray Holcomb that served on council with me <laughs> was my principal and my teacher in he the sixth grade. You were your principal and you were the mayor at the time. So. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you weren't the mayor? I was at school when Ray was, uh, I went through the sixth grade, I went through Franklin School, all sixth grades at that time, and Ray was a principal when I was going through there, and he also was my sixth grade teacher. So uh, we had uh, quite a repertoire before he got on council. Then I said to Ray, I, I used to tease him. I said, now well, I'm in charge. I remember some of the things you so That's to. right. <laughs> I was on president of the council. <laughs> you were president of the council at the when time. When he first came on. Yeah, yeah. of course I was. Well, there. of course, uh, you would probably stand and salute Ray Holcomb day after day because he was a wonderful person all the way through, whether he was in this classroom, in the principal's chair, or on council floor. He was always the same person, a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, you mentioned something there that I think uh, we could talk about too, and that is that um, you went to Franklin School. We don't have the names of some of the teachers from Franklin School. If you can give us the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade Mrs. teachers. Mrs. Hartman was my music teacher. She's still living. She's still living in Medina. Yeah. On, well, not in Medina, but it's on the way to Medina on the, on the west side of the road, I believe, or um, east side of the road in yep. Medina. I see yeah. her from time to time. North of 162 uh, on 57. And who else is down there was uh, Mrs. McCafferty. Helen McCafferty. Was, wasn't her name. Her name was, uh, escapes me now, darn it. Uh, but anyhow, she had a fourth grade teacher. Uh, boy. Second and third, John. I, <laughs> I can't remember all that. Uh, I was not a good student. I don't really relish some of the memories. I had a lot of fun in school. I enjoyed myself. Uh, what about in junior high school? Uh, who, who, with whom did you have some fun? Well, who was also a fellow councilman with you at one time. Uh, uh, Bugs what? McCafferty was, uh, and, and I enjoyed him. I loved him. He Mr. McCafferty now taught, did. taught science. Biology. biology. Yeah, biology. And of course I had uh, uh, Mr. Lyron for uh, chemistry, uh, you know, Bill's father. Uh, Mr. Schaefer was, uh, and his wife. His wife both taught. Yeah, I had both of them. Barb Schaefer and um, his first name now. <laughs> he's in, he's in uh, Lions Club with me now, and I can't, I just, you know, should write this down before we get on air. Uh, but he was both of uh, my teachers. Let's see, who else? Who was you thinking of? Jerry Pate. Oh, Jerry was a classmate of mine. Yes, that's right. And he's. He was a lot of fun. Uh, and, well, the other classmate I served was Jim Rivers. Jim Rivers. is in my class, too. And uh, I enjoyed Jim. And of course, he went into education like you did. And, and uh, he's retired now. And, and uh, Yes, all of us old-timers are retired, except people like mayors <laughs> who have easy jobs. Right, John? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah nothing yeah. to it. John, let's go back to um, a little bit of your family. Um, what? Uh, uh, what, what, what do you think um, brought the, the Hannas to Wadsworth? Uh, just the fact that there was work or what? 
Yeah, I, that's right. Uh, my, my grandfather was a farmer, and then when he went to work at the match shop, and that's where he had worked, uh, his name was Frank Ivan, and they called him F.I. Hannah. And uh, they... Uh, Spell Hyben for the sake of the historians who will write this. F, Hannah? H-A-N-N-A? No, 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 no. Frank, your oh, grandfather. Uh, Frank, F-R-A-N-K, Ivan, I-V-E-N. Or I-V-A-N. I-V-A-N. Yeah. yeah, and his last name was Hannah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that was my grandfather. And, yeah. and he, uh, he'd come to work at the match shop, to work for the match shop, and then we, uh, of course, moved to town. And uh, That's my, what brought them. Yeah. In other words, many people who were farmers at one time wanted to become a little bit more affluent, so they went to the mat shop. The mat shop was paying what at that time? Do you have any idea? Well, I really don't. I, it, but it was an increase over what he'd had. It was an increase, but it was very, very little, but yeah. it was steady. Yeah. The mat shop always worked. Yep. They always worked. They didn't make much money, but they always worked. And a lot of people came to town for that. Exactly. And that's what I wanted to hear you say, that yeah. here you're the grandchild, a 60-year-old grandchild, of a person who came to Wadsworth because of the mat shop. Exactly. Many of the people who came here came because of work either at the injector, the salt, the box board, well, not the box board particularly, or the Ohio match company, the Ohio companies, and we're going to try to get um, one of the offsprings of the young family to come in because they're the ones who, in the 1890s, began the Ohio companies. John, let's go to uh, following high school. Uh, you became a very, um, oh, I should say, a very prominent entrepreneur in Wads- in Wadsworth. And uh, I'm going to ask you a question be- before we go into what you did and how you got there. But uh, the word entrepreneur uh, is a word that you learned on council floor one time. How did you learn that word? Well, from you. From me. And I got so tickled, I saw a sign in Quebec that said Joliet, uh, it was the name of the guy, Juliet, whatever his last name was, uh, entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. And it was right in front of a hardware store. And I've never seen that as in print anywhere that was on a sign. That was so unusual, and I think I come back and told you. You came back and told me because I had used the word entrepreneur, and you didn't know what it was. Well, not that you didn't know what it was, but you had not. uh, It was not part of the vocabulary there. And it was not ever saw it in print. And saw it in print, E-N-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-R. Now, uh, John, you became a very prominent entrepreneur in Wadsworth, but it didn't start that way. How did you start? What did you do? Well, I started to work at the injector. Doing and, what? And I was working in the Ford shop also. With whom? Some uh, of the people. Uh, well, Emerson Farrell was the uh, uh, manager of the Ford shop. and uh, He had a family here in Wadsworth. They're all gone now from yeah, here. Right. <clears throat> There's nobody I know of no. no family anymore, and he's, so he passed away. But they have, uh, uh, and my father was there. i got to think of some more. Uh, there were several. Well, you knew everybody at the injector. Well, of course. You yes. know, Chuck Kale worked down there. Uh, he was uh, a, a big supervisor of yeah. a whole. Al Sifford. Yeah. And, and um, Gorman. Mr. Gorman. Gorman. Uh, what was his first name? Al, uh, Al Sifford and uh, Tony Sifford both. And uh, it just everybody. And, uh, I'm trying to think of the last one. His daughter, the guy I'm trying to think of, owns the... Uh, a shop where they sell cheeses and stuff on 261 out there. Oh, yes, right. Um, it'll come to us. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things we do in this program is not to worry about forgetting because we all forget. Yeah. We all have the same disease. But age. I see him from time to time, too. And, you know, just the, the people that uh, you, you enjoy. And Jerry Gorman then was in my class of school. He has since passed away with a heart yes, attack. He had a heart attack, He was the yeah. son of uh, uh, Mr. Gorman down right. there. But, you know, I remember the injector would have a picnic every year at Chippewa Lake, and then right. the mat shop would have a picnic every year at Chippewa Lake. And I'd make sure that I hung around Bose's house, you know, Charlie and Charlie Bose, Bose, right? so that I'd get invited to go to the mat shop picnic with them. And so I always went to two picnics to, a year. Yeah, two a year. Big. And actually, as you, when you were growing up, uh, social life wasn't really extraordinary, was it? No, no, not at all. And, and I never felt, well, I can remember sitting in there, they, the, my grandparents and the parents would be playing euchre, listening to the radio, and I'd be sitting there, you know, uh, doing homework or whatever, listening to radio too. That was uh, it. Yeah. That was it. That was it. And of course, you went during, through the war, the Second World War, 
uh, which started four years at when you were four years old and lasted for five years. I can remember hearing broadcast toward the end of the war, and, and it's kind of stuck with me, you know, sure. that, that they'd say, now you shut up, You're, we're listening to the radio. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Tell us then how you finally left the injector and went to work with something that finally became a part of your life that uh, you're associated with now. Okay, I had gone to work for Western Southern Insurance, uh, and I worked for them for like... Uh, seven years or eight years. And, and I, that was not in Wadsworth, however. Well, they, uh, we reported in Norton, where the office was, right. and uh, worked out of that. And a little bit, uh, when I first hired in, we was out of Copley Road over in Akron. Uh, so then I was went into management, where I was called a staff manager, and I didn't really care for that. Uh, so I started looking around uh, to, and if I would take had several offers to take transfers to different places. Uh, one was to Seattle, and just and I didn't want to move. I went, I was happy staying in Wadsworth, so we uh, uh, I started looking around uh, at, at what I could uh, get into, and I made an application with uh, of course State Farm, and they uh, been very good to me. I have 30 years this December. 30 years this December. Norton had another significance for you as well. What was that? Oh, I found my wife over you there. You found your wife over there, about <laughs> 1959 or so. Yeah, I'd have to sit back and, uh, yeah, that's well earlier than that, probably. You, but you were married in 59? Uh, 58, maybe. You're married in 58? Yeah, I, I think thought. that's it. Well, close. That's maybe. close enough. <laughs> I'm sure that I'll get a call from Josie telling well, us when you were married, but yeah. it's not 58, 59, yeah. somewhere in that area. Um, how did you meet Josie? A friend of mine. Tell us who she was first and foremost. Oh, and her name is, and she'll kill us for this, it's not Josie, it's Josephine. Josephine Solonovic. And her mother's name was Josephine. Right. I said, you're the first girl I ever met that's a junior. And she, yes. she don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a friend of mine knew her and introduced me and, uh, uh, and we just hit it off real well. And of course, uh, I haven't changed partners, so I guess. <laughs> oh, you bet, you bet. So um, uh, you got a real jewel. Yeah, she's really uh, part of any success that I enjoy. That's I right, mean, exactly. Part. So yeah, that's true. Uh, a different culture. Uh, her parents were both born in in Yugoslavia. Uh, her mother was born near Ljubljana, and her father was born in the mountains. Ljubljana. Ljubljana. Yeah, you can say it a little better. <laughs> and. Uh, I love the cooking. Gee, I just love it. And of course, uh, when she lived with us uh, for about five years until she passed away, uh, my mother-in-law, uh, the boys just just sincerely enjoyed her. Of course, it was, good food. And, and her stories it was really funny. So uh, they were exposed to something that was unusual too in, at their age. And right. Tell us a little bit about Josie's family and who her family are in Wadsworth. Uh, she has no relatives in Wattsworth except her brother, which lives out in Sky Park. Yeah, well, it's Joe. And Joe and his uh, Joe, Joe and Mary. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been out there about I don't know 18, 20 yeah. years. Uh, he had lived in Barberton most of his life. Sherman. And in, in, uh, in grew up well, 16th Street in Barberton. They had a house for an awful long Did time. They? Yeah. And then she has a sister in California, Mary, and a sister in uh, Florida, Frances. And she had another sister, which was Betty, who was killed in a car accident. Yep. Uh, about, oh, golly, I don't remember how long that was. That's quite a while ago. A long time ago. But long it's uh, uh, a nice family. They're really, we enjoy visiting them when oh, we get to them. Oh, they're outstanding people. I've known them for years and years, 45 years at least. The one that never give up the cooking and got all the good recipes is Frances, the one that lives in Florida. She could cook just like her mother. And, and that's, that's good cooking, too. Then you went from the um, uh, the so western, not western and southern um, to State Farm. To State Farm, and where were you in State Farm? Well, I started out in the basement of my house, and then I, I went to Barberton for a year. Then I moved back to Wadsworth. I was up on High Street and had an office. And then I had an office with uh, John Madigan and Frank Collins, and then. Uh, they expanded their business, so I went down and bought the building where I'm at. Now. Where you are right now. Uh, where were you living in Wadsworth when you first were married? Uh, on Baldwin Street. On Baldwin Street. Yeah, we purchased a house from, uh, golly, what was the guy's name? I think I want to say Henson. It would have been uh, I, related to JD somehow, but I don't know. 
uh, he had built a house there and we purchased that. And then we lived there for uh, quite a while and then we moved to Longview and been there for like 30 years, 20 30 years. 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would say, well, yeah, I probably close to that. How many kids? Oh, we have three boys. And they are? John, Jeff, and Joe. John, Jeff, and Joe. John is what? Uh, John is the baker in town. He right, he has Ann's, Ann's Bakery. Yeah. Uh, not married, never been married. We're looking out there in, in, in TV land, we're looking for... <laughs> no, <don't. laughs> I'll, get, I'll get killed. How old is John? John's 39. And uh, then Jeff is the next one, and he has uh, he's a dentist in town. He has a family dentist practice on Reimer Road. Right, just building a brand new building. Yeah, build a new building out there. Uh, and he is married, has two children, uh, uh, Alexa and, and Jeffrey Jr. But he's not called Jeff; he's called Jake. Jake. Jake or Jakers. Jakers. Either and one of those he's two. two, and Alexa's four. Then Joey's the youngest, and he's the most prolific. <laughs> he produces well, and I love these kids. They're really fun. I, grandkids, if you don't have them, you, and you have grandkids now. I have one. You can't imagine how, uh, how much fun they are. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. And where is Joe? what does Joe do? Uh, Joe is a, a stockbroker for uh, uh, Edward, uh, Edward B. Jones uh, in Medina. He went to work right out of college for... Uh, uh, another stockbroker and then uh, worked there two years that had an office in Medina and they moved to downtown Akron and he went with these other people and he's been with them ever since. We're going to get back to um, <clears throat> State Farm and your building down on Broad Street but uh, before we do that um, uh, almost at the same time you began somewhat of a political life uh, probably 25 years ago or better. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the first political activity that you had? Do you know who was responsible for me getting into politics? It was Bob Gerbrick. Bob Gerbrick. And how did Bob Gerbrick do that? He ran for council at Ward 1 and, and was defeated. He defeated. And then the next time he came around for candidates, he said, I'd like you to come to a meeting. And I said, well, I'll come. I'm interested. But nothing was said about a candidate until after I got to the meeting. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to run. And, and of course, uh, that's what started it all. And you won the first time, yes. Who uh, did you run against? Do you remember? And Ward won. Boy, that's a good question. I can't remember. Uh, I, I served there for one term. And then I ran again and was defeated. And Who defeated you? Milo Jones. Milo Jones. Super, Mike Jones. Super guy. Oh yes, your neighbor. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, uh, and then I run for uh, a council at large and won that. And then I went for president of council, and then I was elected uh, actually uh, ten times, but I never served all of them. I, of course, sad thing happened. Doc passed away, and at that time, the state statute said that. Uh, the uh, president council was automatically the, the uh, uh, mayor, and he served a term out. At that point in time, I really had no no intention. Now, of, when we say, Doc, this is what's for the sake of history. This is Doctor uh, Char Robert, Charles Robert Daniels. Right, right, right. He passed away, and and he had about uh, fourteen or fifteen months on his term yet, and that was what I fulfilled that term. And during that period of time, uh, I made some decisions. There were some things I wanted to accomplish that I thought I could. And so I decided to run for one term. And of course, I was uh, elected. Jack Hall ran against me. And then uh, I ran for another term after that because uh, the fiber optics was just getting involved, and that was my pet. And project. we want to talk about fiber optics, too. But before we start talking about that, when you first came on console, what were some of the problems that were facing the city of Wadsworth that um, probably have either been taken care of now or have gone away? Well, you know, most of the things uh, have changed from each each two-year period or each council takes on its own personality. Uh, some of the things that uh, had happened uh, at that point in time, we were just coming into what we call the Sunshine Law. That's right. And that changed the way politics was run all over not just here, but in, in state and everywhere. Uh, and the Sunshine Law, explain the Sunshine Law for the sake of history. The Sunshine Law means that whenever more than two people meet that, 
yeah, you have two or more, or three or more, but uh, when they meet together uh, to discuss anything that would become legislation at any point later, that there had to be a notification, notification. of the press had. Now, the three people have to be council people. Oh, correct. They would actually vote on it. Then if they were, uh, the way I understand it, that if he uh, was voted on later, it could be thrown out. That's right. So the Sunshine Law really brought all of the meetings into the open. Mm -hmm. And how did that change things, John? Well, there used to be uh, some of the things were, were decided at either the Moose Club or either out Lions of, Club or, or somewhere else. At least wherever guys could get together after a council meeting and, and, and talk about what they wanted to accomplish. And the press would not have any knowledge of it until they uh, uh, brought legislation forward. And certainly that's the minute it's in writing, it's public knowledge now. And, of course, and, right. And, so, and in addition to that, uh, television is right there, too, for all of your council meetings. Well, they kind of fought that at first. You know, I, Why did you fight it? Well, I didn't. I, you know, it, first of all, they all had to dress up. You, that know, you wouldn't believe something. what it made people look like. Oh, boy. They would come, and I remember one time uh, uh, Mike Jones was on council, and I was on council, and Gary Bernard was on, too. Well, then I would have been. I think, and Gary come in their room and he, in the platform shoes were right. real popular. And they got all done with the council meeting and uh, held their hand up and said, uh, uh, Council President, I'd just like to ask a question. And he says, how long does Dr. Bernard have to wear these orthopedic shoes <laughs> <laughs> before his feet get better? <laughs> So it was kind of fun. We used to have a lot of fun. Now they don't do a lot of things like that. No, they are a little more careful about that well, because they're, they're very uh, sensitive. And they're always dressed up. It's ever since then. No, they didn't prior. And and if you remember, we had to read all the legislation. Yes, we did. And I can remember sitting there till 10, 11 o'clock. Yes, reading every single solitary word. Word that was. And I remember there. a twenty-page uh, piece of legislation that uh, was all uh, words of uh, which were uh, not necessarily necessarily sexually explicit but they were all words and the beautiful beautiful clerk that we had Dharma Mast who was the lady of the first world order uh, was embarrassed about reading them and I felt so bad for her because she probably had never said many of those things in her lifetime and she surely would never would never have said them in public but she read it and she did a beautiful job and a just in perfect decorum but all the way through <clears throat> what about the first uh, years that you were in um, in council? Today they pretty well sit in uh, ward one, two, three, four council at large, council at large, council at large, council president, and so forth. How did we separate the people? Well, there was that's a good question, and and, and there are several ways to do it. And I've done it uh, as president of council for so many years. I I, I separated them uh, so that. Uh, one time we had smokers over here That's and right. non-smokers over there. Right. Another time uh, I would try to uh, separate the people so that they couldn't talk on council That's prior right. to voting, and, and and have a if they had a predetermined idea of what they wanted to do, they couldn't go. To, but are you really voting like that yes, or something? Mm -hmm. So we we put them so they they were kind of separated. Uh, and uh, we as council president, I put the name. The name plates out in front, and that's where they sit. That's where they sit exactly. Now we um, we don't allow any smoking at all in City Hall. No. But at that time, we had people who smoked cigars. We had people who smoked pipes, and people who smoked cigarettes. And um, I happened to be uh, very sensitive to smoke, and I would come out of those with a horrible, horrible headache every single. I was so pleased, absolutely so pleased. So when I left Council, two things happened. The very last day that I was on council in that term. The following day, we no longer had to read the the uh, the ordinances. And the following day, uh, no one is allowed to smoke in council. And I thought, well, I can't. I left at the wrong well, time. I'll tell you something that was kind of a surprise to me. And, and Ray Holcomb did this to me. He was ornery. Uh, he we had passed an ordinance. There's no smoking at all in the building over building, here. Period. Period. And he. Uh, since I do still smoke, I am a pipe smoker, mm -hmm. uh, he had my name at the top sponsoring the legislation. <laughs> <laughs> the newspaper asked me about it, and I said, what are you talking about? And I looked, there was my name. <laughs> I said, my principal got me. <laughs> the principal got you again. He doesn't want you to smoke. 
John, during the years that you were in, uh, in, in City Hall, uh, who were some of the outstanding people, uh, not necessarily in terms of what they did, but the people that you remember? I know that Thelma's going to be one of them, but who were some of the other people in City Hall that you remember? Oh, you're right. Thelma's the most memorable Thelma person. Thelma Schaefer. Yeah. She, she was, was a, a wonderful person and certainly a tough lady. When, when she left, it took two people to replace her. You bet. It really did, because she did the payroll for the whole city by hand. Uh, let's see, who else? Uh, oh, the auditor upstairs for years uh, drove Chrysler's. Now there's another name I'm going to forget. Ted Ewing. Yeah, Ted. Well, what he'd do, every time we go to ask about the budget, he would underestimate the city income tax every year. And I'd go down and i said, Bill, we're going to be in trouble here because look at the money. He says, damn it, he did it again. <laughs> 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 he'd never tell anybody. And he'd keep it very uh, low key, you know. And of course, that was his way of helping control the budget. You know? Surely. He never told them how money much does. money they That's had. Right. That's the way the old farmers used to do it. How much money do you have? A dollar and a half. And they had about $2,000, but you would, uh, you would spend only a dollar and a half. Well, the first mayor that we had that really took charge of the budget and knew what he was uh, very knowledgeable was Jack Summers. Yes, Jack was really great. He was, uh, I think his major in college was in, in finance too. Uh, he was, he, he was uh, his middle name was finance. Yeah, and he so he really, he, he really uh, controlled the budget and, and what happened then, of course, when you control the money, then you know what you can do and what you can't do. Sure. And he accomplished a lot during his term. Uh, of course, we're different. And we had many uh, arguments over the years of different things, friendly arguments. But uh, yeah, I got a kick out of him. He's, he was quite a contributor to Washington. Can you think of some of the other people, outstanding people? Well, I think, uh, of course, J.D. Henson was always the mayor. And I got along fantastic with Earl Gottwald. Surely. He was just, uh, uh, and he was the one that started, and his name appears nowhere, the uh, Steiner. Center. That's right, exactly. He started that whole ball of rolling, and then he was left uh, politics at that time. But boy, we wouldn't have it if it wasn't for Earl. Now, your name is on the on the um, a plaque at Steiner's. Yeah, we built that during my administration. Right. And I mean, when I was uh, on, on council. council, and my name is on there as well. Let's tell a little bit about um, Steiner, how it started and what the problems were and where the money came from and all of that. I know that people might know that, but there were a lot of problems involved with that. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, what was the attorney downtown that handled the estate for Mr. Steiner? That, uh, of course, it's right there where uh, Tri-County Insurance is now. Uh, and he was the one that was handling the, the estate for Steiner. And, uh, uh, of course, Earl started the ball rolling and it was left to the children Underprivileged children, Under of, children of, Medina, of uh, Wadsworth. And that so, no child in Wadsworth would de be deprived an opportunity for recreation. Well, that come later. They didn't, it wasn't defined that good. It we wasn't defined that. We defined it. And the attorney did too. That was really, a, a Chuck Johnson was serving with us at that That's time. That's right. And Chuck, as another attorney, uh, kind of got together with, uh, boy, that name extremes me. Where was his office? I'll tell you which. It was right down there uh, next to the Citizens Bank on down the street, just uh, uh, one door or two. He was, uh, he had the. Oh, Shantz. That's right. Or, okay. Carl Shantz. Carl Shantz yes. was the attorney that, that was handling the estate for him. So then uh, those two did most of the finance, worked out just what you'd said, because at the time, there was some question, how do you do this with the kids? Uh, so they decided that uh, they would, any underprivileged child, and, and they determine it through the Salvation Army, and I think it's school lunch program as well. Lunch program and some other ways, get free passes, and they're not any different from what you would buy, so certainly they didn't know They that, didn't know it, that's that, right. That the kids wouldn't be stigmatized in any way. But this happens today, yeah. And that's kind of uh, uh, where that comes. So 250000 and the building, runs in my mind, was almost a million, I think. Or, well, he gave 500000 didn't he? Yeah, uh, but uh, I think some of it went through tennis courts and some other things right. for kids. But they they built that, and, and that at that time was the most money that we had ever spent in any one building in Wattsworth. So uh, Chuck Johnson had the idea. He says, uh, he says, we need an inspector. So we hired uh, Don Kaler. Don Kaler. And he was our inspector. He worked in, in Akron as a uh, 
uh, inspector for the city of Akron, and at night he would come over here the minute he get off work and, and go through all the stuff that had happened that day, and he had the plans, and he would go over. And we we did, I think he saved himself, uh, we, we justified his salary because oh, no question about it. he found uh, some mistakes in uh, some of the pools they were going to cement the next day, a, a line that was a four-inch line, should have been a six, uh, carry the water, uh, and, and just stuff like that, I'd hear about that. But it worked out well. Uh, the, the worst thing we ever did on the whole thing was let him put a flat roof on it, though. <laughs> well, of course, that's very true with almost anything. I can't believe that in this day and age we still have flat roofs when we know fully well that rain and snow uh, deteriorate. Well, that's right. Well, that's why the city hall over here, when they built that, that was council's main uh, objective. He said, before I told the architect, uh, they told him how many square foot they wanted or what they wanted to house in there. They said, you designed the building in no flat roof. No flat roof, absolutely. That's a good idea. My father used to build small buildings when we were growing up. Of course, he was not an architect, so he didn't know how to build flat roofs, and he always built one little, with a little point. I wonder if <laughs> we ought not to do that today with everything. John, we're going to run out of time if we don't get some of these other kinds of things done, but uh, we want to get to the fiber optics, but before we get to the fiber optics, tell us about uh, things such as the new construction of City Hall. Uh, tell us such things as uh, the, um, the battles you've had to have with um, uh, Planning Commission and things like that to get... Uh, and I'm not going to mention another word. <laughs> it starts yeah. with A and ends yeah. with courts. Yeah, I know. I want to mention that. Uh, the, uh, uh, one of the things that was real sensitive, of course, that went through Planning Commission, and I was on council at the time as President of Council, was when they wanted to put in the, the home for the, uh, I don't know what to say here, how the word, uh, not uh, retarded, but handicapped right, people. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was going over here on First uh, Street, on the Woodland. On Woodland. Uh, yeah, they had a big fight. Oh, that was, everything happened there. And uh, then they ended up, a few years later, that, that it did come to town and it was uh, on First Street, on worked First out Street. well. That was a real bugger. More recently, when uh, I, uh, Mary Lee Stitzel come to me and said that she wanted to put in a, uh, uh, an elder care Elder center. care on uh, at the end of um, Great Oaks. Great Oaks Drive. And they had purchased that 67 acres, and uh, uh, so we had quite a fight with them up there, and that was a real bugger to go. But, you know, most of the people now it's in, it's, it's gorgeous. Oh, that's a beautiful place. And, and that happens throughout the community. It happened up here when we was going to put in the one up there off of 261, uh, which is uh, uh, Menwa. Menwa. Uh, the people have come just having a fit. You know, this is terrible. This is going to ruin our property values. We're not going to be able to sell our homes. And it's gorgeous. You know, and then another property values were affected by that. In fact, back my son lives there, and the backyard backs up into there, and, and they couldn't ask for nicer neighbors. Oh, they are, surely. And when they built the, uh, the towers down here, uh, that was the first high rise, and oh, they just had a fit on that. That was, of course, a federal project. Uh, so you can see it, uh, it's uh, the people, and of course, don't really get excited about uh, government until it affects them directly. You bet, and then they come right out, and no, of course yeah. that's what it's supposed to be, uh, government yeah. uh, by the people, for the people. John, um, tell us quickly about the, um, the reasons for having to build a new city hall and all of the problems that occurred there. You were, yeah, you were that, right in the middle of that uh, one, and as a matter of fact, you, uh, you probably got your neck sliced um, whichever way you turned. That was a bugger. Uh, Sue Cox and I were... were Tell in, us who Sue Cox oh, is. Oh, Sue Cox is our, our personnel director for the city of Wadsworth, and of course she, her job that's very broad, but uh, uh, this involves ADA. Which is? Uh, Americans Act for Disabilities. Americans with Disability Act. Act. And of course, this is what was passed a few years ago. We had a court upstairs in our old building. Had no it access. Was a municipal court. court. No access except stairs. Uh, we had a complaint filed against us uh, in Washington. We were just one of the few that they must have just picked it out of a pile and, and we got nailed. I know there's been other complaints filed against other municipalities within the county, and, and I've heard nothing from them. They since have been swamped. But what happened, they come out and reviewed it and said that you will comply. 
you uh, put an elevator in there, you uh, uh, make the restrooms handicapped accessible, you'll make uh, where the doorways aren't wide enough, you will change those. Well, we went and looked at what it would cost to redo the old building and to bring it up to standards. And I think it was like six to $800,000 to put an elevator and all the stuff that they wanted. It's, we still had an old building. So we, which is all chopped up. Yeah, and it was three different buildings the, at three that's different right. times. The only, the only good thing about the building was the fact that um, you didn't have to worry about exercise anywhere else because you were going up and down stairs. I don't care where you turned. You had to go either up or downstairs. Correct. So what we did, uh, we the people come from Washington. They give us a caseworker, and we said we would like time to build this. We had and started the plans, that's where we were at. And we justified not using the old building because of cost and we could go forward. And we asked, could we continue to hold council meetings upstairs and court if we had that closed circuit TV? So they come and looked at it and physically looked at the closed circuit TV that we had set up over at the- uh, uh, Council chamber. And, and uh, they, where they could talk was either downstairs in the engineering department where we set it up so they could, it was on ground floor wheeled in right there. And this has happened while we were there too. And, and a, a person in a wheelchair could then talk to council. They had a monitor there and they said, yes, but we're gonna report every three months. So then you had to pass this uh, whole, all this legislation and, and, and we got through it. But uh, what happened, I, I'll tell you a couple stories. Uh, we were talking about this it, it, uh, with these people, and they had uh, from Washington, where five of them come. They took pictures of where we were at, and then they took pictures again when we finished. And they used this in Washington as a bad example of what happened to a good, good project. <laughs> and it's it's like a training film. But there were five of them there. There was uh, two TV professionals. There was uh, 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 an attorney which worked for the ADA, uh, my caseworker and the caseworker's boss. And we sit down at the big table in the mayor's conference room, and Sue Cox and I. And we said, this is where we're at and this is what we're doing. And they said, well, do you agree to all of this? And I said, you know, I do. I, I think it's we, we can keep functioning if we agree and everything. But you, I said, I'm not the last word. I have a consul that I report to. And they says, we don't care. And that attorney leaned over and said that, just like that. And they said, if you can't, we'll channel your money. So I assumed from that remark that they had the authority, and I'm pretty sure they did, to go to a federal judge and build our own project. They had wanted us, prior to making the visit, to take and move all of Consul and all of City Hall up to uh, the Steiner and run it out of there because that was handicapped accessible and had, had uh, well, we'd have shut it down is what would have happened. They wouldn't have had any any uh, functions going on up there except the city business. Oh, surely. So that was real touchy in, in uh, when we'd have an argument with the architects because it was fairly new law. It was passed in uh, 85, I think. 85, I think you're right. And, and our architect had a, and there's two sets of rules. The, the Ohio, state of Ohio has a set of rules and the federal government's got a set of rules. And they didn't care what the Ohio rules had said. to do the federal. We have federal. Now that's strange though, but the federal rules for the federal buildings is different from any other building. Federal buildings do not have to be handicap, ha handicap that's, that's accessible. That's correct. The but, post office at the same time right. we had to go forward and do what, and spend the money to do that was certainly, uh, with the big steps in the front of the building, everybody remembers those, uh, was uh, terrible. They, I mean, you just, you, no way if you had a wheelchair you could Of course, they've changed that now with the new post office, but when the old right. post office and, and all of the strips in Washington don't have to be no. uh, In fact, we, we go to Washington, uh, Bill and I, uh, about once Bill a year, Lyron. Yeah, uh, twice a year to lobby on behalf of Amp Ohio. And, uh, it's just been last year you noticed curb cuts in Washington. Yes, they never had those before. No, they didn't have no. to, but now they do. John, before we run out of time, let's talk about your pet uh, project for which you will always be known as uh, the mayor. 
uh, and that's the fiber optics. Uh, where did you get the idea? How did you come up with it? Um, what were some of the battles? Um, how did you get it uh, through? Uh, all of those things. Well, one of the things, and we'll go clear back, is when, when I was on council, uh, we decided that cable was coming to town, and we took bits. We this hired is cable television. Cable television. From Warner Cable from, from Akron, Warner, correct? Warner Cable. And, well, there were several other companies. But, but I mean, that's what we had. Yeah. And, of course, I think there were three or four, and, and we sorted through them and thought that that was the best bid that we could get at this time. And, of course, we give them a 15-year contract. At the end of the contract, we were have a buyout. The buyout would say that we would even add a formula in there, how to determine what it was worth, that we would buy the whole system. Because at that time, Bill had enough foresight, and the, the man that we hired in, in Washington, the attorney, said, this is going to be the future. Well, and so we went, and, and as we got closer, there was several federal laws changed that made that contract not worth the paper it's written on. Mm -hmm. And so when I became mayor, I'd ask Stephen Fry. I said, Steve, I said. Tell us who Stephen Fry is. Oh, he's the general manager for Warner Cable in uh, Akron. Akron and Kent. Uh, he's, uh, and he'd come out from time to time because we, we made him follow our contract, which a lot of cities don't, we found since then. But what happened was I said, uh, he was talking about what Warner Cable so wonderful and everything. And I said, Steve, I said, what, what would it take to buy that? He says, it's not for sale. I said, well, the contract's coming up. And he said, that's not worth anything it's written on. And I said, well, who's your boss? Can I talk to him? Slapped his hand on the desk, got up and turned around and walked out. He, had, he said, I will spend my own money so that you don't get into this. I, he just, it's been an adversary position of Wadsworth and Warner Cable almost from the get-go because we made him follow the contract. Uh, so that kind of set the stage in, in fiber optics have been around a while, but you know, as it's, it's getting more and more uh, use, the prices of things come down. Right, absolutely. So everything. we, Bill had done some studies in, in, uh, in our uh, SCADA system, which monitors... What is SCADA system? Oh, SCADA system it monitors all of our uh, uh, transformers, uh, not transformers, our substations throughout the community, and they can shut and open switches all over the air. We wanted to put some fiber to hook that up. Well, as we got a little bit more involved, we thought, gee, you know, we put the SCADA system in and, and loop the city with fiber, then why can't we get into the, the cable business? And, and that's just an incidental to this whole fiber optic thing. Uh, we would like to read meters. We've had the gas company down here. They will pay us to read the meters. Gas company's meter cost to read per, per, per meter per read is 70 cents. And we could probably do it more, uh, well, I know we can, cheaper than that, and, and they pay us. In fact, they're very excited about it. Uh, we'd read the electric, the water, the gas, and uh, certainly uh, the cable is going very good at this point in time. Uh, next step is to, that I'd like to see, and, and of course, uh, I uh, would like to, and we're working on it at this time, phone system. You know, why, why not? The phone system, the, you would come to town the same as you have a choice now between Warner Cable and Wadsworth TV. You would have a choice between GTE and Wadsworth Telephone System. And what would be the advantage of that, perhaps? Cost. Cost. And, and a, certainly a, a service. Uh, at one point in time, GTE had I don't know, 18, 20 employees in Wadsworth. I think it's like four or five downtown. Right now. Yeah, I, it's just changed. They have a big company, and they're they're doing a lot of different things. But we we feel that you know this it's there. It, it just takes a, a switch. John, the um, it would appear that since you're going to be saving people in Wadsworth a lot of money, with the electric company being pretty well owned by Wadsworth, the electric distribution, and uh, with uh, cable being owned by Wadsworth and perhaps telephone being owned by Wadsworth will be saving a lot of money. Does everyone believe that we ought to be doing this, or did you have some battles with people who feel that we should not be in the private enterprise? Yeah, there's a lot of people that uh, want to privatize all government. 
you know, they don't feel that the principle there, and, and you know, uh, is that uh, certainly this is not for what city should be in. It should be in this business. Well, I figure if you can't run it right, then you shouldn't be in it. But we proved that we can run it right because our electric rates are almost 50%, if they aren't in some cases, cheaper than our surrounding communities that are served by Ohio Edison. Right. I think that uh, one of the people who writes about government economics says that uh, the government takes over any entity that private industry does not want to take over because it's not cost effective. For instance, safety. Well, the other thing too, Caesar, what I, I, we kind of looked at here, uh, government has tried to regulate cable because there's a lot of money in that. There's a lot of profit and they want to regulate. But they can't regulate it. Competition's the only thing going to regulate that's, it. Well, that's what regulates us. Yeah. We'll come back to that in a minute, the cable vision, but let's go back to um, John Hanna, the human being, and uh, what he has done in terms of his insurance agency. You bought a building in downtown Ac or downtown Wadsworth, which is located, for the sake of history, on the south side of Broad Street, the first building from the um, corner of Broad and Main, correct? What did it look like when you got it? Oh, it was a barber shop. Uh, Guy Jackson owned that, and uh, Don Cheney was cutting hair in there, and Gary Turner. Uh, and next door was Wolf's Jewelry. Uh, and Which I, way? Uh, it would have been a west East. side. West was, side was, was Wolf's, Wolf's, Wolf's Jewelry. Jewelry. Yeah, and the barber shop was in the other one. So I just one day was going down there, and I thought, gee, you know, they're getting crowded up there on Lyman Street with uh, Frank Collins and, and uh, John Madigan. And I said, I, so I went, went by, and I went in, and I said, can I talk to you? And just the guy, and he said, yeah. So he said, fine, I'd like to retire. And so we drew up a contract, and, and I took it to Chuck Johnson. And he says, where'd you get this? I said I bought it over at Business Utilities. The contract. <laughs> <laughs> he said, this isn't very good. So he said, I'll handle it. So Chuck then handled the deal, and, and we bought that. Uh, and then I started to want to remodel, and uh, so we did. We, you know, I can remember when that was Curtis Electric. Curtis Electric, and that 47, yeah. 46, 47. Uh, they were only pasting people in town selling televisions at that time, I think. And, and uh, so it, it was, I didn't realize it at the time, but it is the oldest commercial building in the city. Right. Uh, what did it look like when uh, you bought it? Uh, well, it had a front on it that we moved clear off and, and big windows and uh, big plate glass windows and I of course removed them and uh, put in different windows and brought uh, when you were windows. when you were remodeling the second floor what did you find oh you remember that I was I upstairs there's no access to the second floor right. except the crawl space there was a uh, a painting uh, a sign making business up there they had a calendar on the wall and the calendar was a, uh, uh, what do I want to say, is a tire company that, uh, Cooper Tires. What year? Oh, golly. You know, I really don't remember. I took it over and showed the librarian at that time, which was a historian. And he he's looked at it and he said, oh, that's nice. And I said, well, I don't want to sell it. And he said, oh. So he kept coming back till I finally sold it to him. Uh, and uh, it was quite valuable. It was just one of the things. So we, we kind of just uh, closed it up. We'd ever use that upstairs, but uh, that was kind of surprising. How big was it, the upstairs? Uh, not that large. Uh, there was like uh, one, two, three rooms up there. And what's, that, what's there now? Nothing. You just have it closed off. Closed off. Yeah. But there is a second floor to that building. Yes. Right. No access except through a crawl space. Through a crawl space. Now, um, the building as you got it was um, probably white or some other color, wasn't it? Yeah. It those, was those, there's pictures of the building and what it looked like. And I went through the High Historical Society uh, and then tried to register it there, to, which would have been a step to go in into uh, down Columbus as I talked to, and I kept all the literature, uh, and it uh, cost me about $500 trying to register that after I'd finished the remodeling uh, in the Historic for Older Buildings uh, National Registry. Uh, it didn't qualify. They, no. Um, you painted it a bright kind of a, not a bright green, but kind of a, um, oh, uh, what color green is that? Uh, 
These are, I don't know, I'm colorblind. I have trouble. I, the, one, the one person that picked up colors, those colors out was uh, Steve Daniel's wife. Marsha. No, not Marsha. Uh, Debbie. Debbie. Debbie, Debbie sorry, Daniels, yeah. right. Marsha's a sister. Sister, right. <laughs> Debbie Daniels colors. picked those colors yes. out. And they are authentic colors. Yes. I don't know that, the, I was thinking of Dartmouth green, but that's, I'm I, sure that's not what it is. But, but Debbie Daniels picked yes. those out. Yeah, she really was a big help. And, and then uh, this, those curly cues at the top, are they original? It was in the building. In, in all the pictures that we've ever been able to find, those are in the original. Those are the original. Now there you, were three buildings there. There are three buildings there. Two. Oh, now, two buildings. There were three. And I got it written down when that building was torn down where the foot doctor's building is. That's where the, the, the um, Dr. Boyer. Boyer is. And there was a third one there. And what was, the, what was in there? There was, originally it was a stable. Then it was, uh, I think after that, a grocery store. Uh, there has been many, many businesses in there. And behind that, Roy Moore had a something. Yeah, he had many, a tree many service or something. What was, what was it? A tree service. Tree service. Remember Roy Moore? Oh, yeah. Yes. Like somewhat of a character. Yeah. He's gone now. What do you re remember about Roy Moore? And that well, I think alley? he had a wagon that he, yeah. he, he, before he even had a horse, I mean, a, a, a car, truck. Car, car, mm -hmm. truck. And he would pull that with a. With a horse. With a horse, that's right. Now, we have only a couple of minutes left, and we have another building in Wadsworth which is extremely important to people, particularly at breakfast, and that is a bakery. How did that come into play? Well, Johnny worked for Mr. Kuhn when he was uh, uh, in high school. Okay, now Johnny is your son. Yeah. Mr. Kuhn is owned Coons Pastry. Coons Pastry, which was where? It was right beside Bluegrass Hardware, where there's a carpet store now. Right. That was over on College Street on the south side of the road. Right. Before you got to Watrusa. Correct. Right. So he uh, uh, worked there, and then when I asked him, I said, well, what do you want to do? You want to go to college? Would, no, I don't. He didn't have any desire. And Mr. Coon said to me one day, this kid's got a knack for this. And I would have to do nothing but really teach him the recipes. And I said, well, uh, do you want to buy the building? For, I mean, buy the business from Mr. Kuhn? And of course he said, yeah. So he did, and he oper operated that for two years, some months. What did he call the business when he Coons first? Pastry. Coons Pastry. Yeah, it was, they never changed the name. Never changed when the name. he bought the business, he bought the right to the name. And we still have a descendant of the Coons here in Wadsworth. Oh, yes. Yeah. Virginia Schaefer. Virginia Coon Safer, who lives on Silver Creek Road. Correct. Uh, so Johnny was real fortunate to work with him. He was a pastry cook, more of a pastry cook, and was had, had pastry. So when he bought it, he bought the recipes too. About three years later, he two or three, he knew Mr. Bassicle owned Ann's Pastry. And Bassicle had been a more of a... Uh, Entrepreneur. Well, yeah, and he'd had a bunch of bakeries up right. in Cleveland. Right, from Cleveland. He was and not a Wadsworth person. No, and moved here and then uh, uh, started Ants. And different kind of a baker, uh, big bread breaker. He was uh, uh, had a lot of different breads. He knew more, uh, more uh, production line stuff and how to be uh, uh, not just a, a, a pastry cook, but it's a whole different kind of bakery. So he. Johnny went over there and, and worked a deal out with Mr. Bassico because he wanted to build it. Spell that name for us. Oh, geez. B-A-S-I-K-O, I think, or E-K-O. Uh, no, there's an L in there, so Bassico. I'll look okay, at it. Okay. That's a good uh, You might be right, Caesar. You well, I probably am not. But he, uh, uh, he then, when Johnny purchased the building, he wanted it because it was all glazed tile inside, easy to keep clean. You know, there, and certainly it was uh, uh, easier to bake in. So he went there and bought that and has been there 20 years. And um, a thriving business. And a very, very good friend of yours is in there quite a bit working. What is her name? Uh, there's several of them in there. Uh, Your best friend. Oh, well, <laughs> that's my wife. Your wife, Josie. <laughs> Yeah, and she does a beautiful job. Well, you know, he takes care of the back, the baking end of it, and, and 
Johnny, uh, it's it's got to be a family or two person job. You know that's that's why they're dying. All, that. it, all you do is see you don't see bakeries like that anymore. They're no. they're all in the store bakeries and the supermarkets and they bake different. I dare say that I have to run by the bakery when I go there because I don't dare eat any of it because it's also good and of course it stays with me forever. John Hanna, born on the on South Lyman Street and Pine. Thought he would spend all of his life at the Ohio Injector Company, as did his father, and or at the Match Company, as did his grandfather. Instead, you branched out. You became a very positive person for Wadsworth, a good um, organizer for all of the things that many of the things that Wadsworth has done. You started your own business. You have a business. You instructed your children to do even more than you did. One is a dentist. Um, one is a um, um, stockbroker. stockbroker, one is an entrepreneur in, in the bakery business. You became the mayor of Wadsworth. From the soul to the crown, that's John Hanna. We are exceedingly proud of you, John. And John Hanna, Mayor John Hanna, entrepreneur John Hanna, thank you for being part of our program. Thank you, Caesar.